You're listening to Tea Life Audio, a podcast about the Japanese way of tea and related arts. For show notes and other resources, go to tealife.audio. Welcome to episode 157. My name is Morris. And this is Aaron. It's been a, been a while, Aaron. It is good to have you back. I can't, can't even remember how long it's been. <laughs> We've missed you. Well, it's nice to be here. Yeah, let's, ho- let's make a tradition of it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make any promises, but I'll try. <laughs> uh, so today I, I was thinking we might talk about guest etiquette um, for, for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, guest etiquette is probably one of my, from a Temai perspective, weaker areas. Um, mm-hmm. I find myself much more often looking up Temai things as the host than I do as the guest. And also I feel well, you're, that, you're probably a host a lot more often. Yes, that's true. That's true. That's the thing. And that's the other thing, right? I, I very, there's very few tea events I go, go to actually as a, as a guest. Um, yeah, and really even, I don't know, when you're in Keiko, do you get to be a guest very often? No, often busy uh, instructing, right? So that's... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And there's another, another thing that I noticed that when I was doing some things with, with Asoko, do you... I noticed that there's quite a lot of differences. And I think that it would be nice to do a bit of a comparison over time. So what I'm thinking that today you and I will talk in details about the Urasenke etiquette. And then later I'll invite someone in to help me contrast that with other schools. Assuming I can mm-hmm. find other school uh, practitioner or teachers that is willing to have that discussion. I don't think you have a problem. <laughs> So, so I, I made a list of, of questions, or maybe I should say that uh, I, I used an AI to get some ideas for our questions. <laughs> oh, no. <You> know? <laughs> <laughs> so, What's an AI want to know about guest etiquette? Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it, it's good at generating ideas, at least. So let's mm-hmm. start at, uh, what's the most important custom a guest should observe during the tea ceremony? Most important custom. You know, you can answer some of these too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll pitch in. That's interesting. I don't know. Uh, the most important custom would probably be um, just adhering to a overall decorum and respectful attitude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I often find this, and I, I think I've mentioned it before, that the hardest thing to tell people that are guests and not, fluent in the etiquette is don't worry just like mm-hmm. you said treat things with respect and everything else is fine yeah yeah if you're not goofing around too much then things will be good <laughs> <laughs> don't goof don't destroy anything and avoid cameras so digital devices maybe. Mm-hmm. yeah anything that can distract from the overall atmosphere that the host is trying to create for you um, but yeah, of course, the host wants you to relax and enjoy yourself. So, so let's talk a little bit about how Wienuda Senke enters the tea room for a tea seki. Okay, we can do that. Um, yeah, which kind of tea seki? <laughs> <laughs> okay, basic rules, right? Yeah, yeah. Is just, um, yeah, I don't know where, how far back you want to start. So let's let's start at the door, right? So, they, I Which think they, door? <laughs> there's there's two alternatives, right? There's a there's a full size fusuma or there's a nijiri guchi. Uh, mm-hmm. So the the basic rule is the same no matter what, right? Mm-hmm. So you're essentially make sure at some point you've excused yourself for going first before the next person, mm-hmm. which generally is going to be a standing bow with your fan, and yep. then uh, one way or another you're going to slide into that room, um, whether it's Nijiriguchi or a full-size Shoji or Fusuma. Mm. So that means in, a, in the Fusuma, you'll sit down, fan in front, open the door. In Nijiriguchi, uh, uh, you'll kneel down and then put the yeah. fan inside, right? I guess I'd say squatting down because kneeling might mean putting your knee on the ground. Yeah, yeah, good point. 
And then you um, you look into the yeah. room and then mm -hmm. slide. Yeah, with your fan in front first, you look into the room, and then yeah, slide in either from the standing or squatting position or from already kneeling or you know sitting in says on the floor. Hmm. And the reason you look in is why. Orient yourself. Where, where yeah, am I going next? Orient. What am I doing? And also to coordinate with other guests. So if you're not the first, obviously you, um, uh, the door might already be open if you're not the first, but, but you want to see if the, the guest ahead of you is, is ready so you can move in, in synchronicity. Yeah, moving uh, together. And also that first guest had to figure out the, the route, right, through the room. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So if you're not first, make sure you follow the route that the first guest has set up. Hmm. Hopefully the first guest figured out a way that everybody can get in there not getting in each other's way. <laughs> a good, good <laughs> Sometimes it's to, very hard. A good reason to have an experienced person be the first guest. Yeah. Yeah, it's it can be really difficult to figure out how to get people in so that everyone can do their hiking of the toko and then move over to the to Maiza, and then go sit somewhere else and wait while other people come in and still not be in the way. Mm. So, so let's talk about, the, as you stand up, you walk to the uh, Tokonoma, you sit down again, then what? So again, you put your fan in front of you, uh, depending on the seki, you're going to do a, what we call Shin Bao, so anyway, the most formal bow. And then back up to your soul position, and then looking at whatever's in the tokonoma. Probably it's a scroll. Mm. The so first the time you go in, just so so we don't assume too much. But the soul position here would be slightly lean forward with the fingertips touching the tatami, right? Yeah, I, I have a whole bunch of new information about different variations <laughs> <laughs> from this last uh, trip to Japan this summer. Mm -hmm. But the way we've all been doing it for a long time, and it's what kind of standard is yet, just leaning over far enough so your fingertips touch the floor mm. is the soul position. Mm. And and from there, we're reading the, the scroll or looking at the scroll. Uh-huh. Yeah, and um, if you're the first guest, whenever you're done with that, then you do another formal bow, take your fan, and get up to go around to the Tamaiza. If you're this later guest, um, when you're done, you do the same. And at the same time, who's ever at the Tamaiza is kind of waiting for you so that they can stand up, like you were saying, kind of keeping it synchronized is nice. Mm. It's not necessary, but it's nice. Mm. So then from, from Tamaiza, just a, a side question. If this was a, a, like a chakai, there would often be both flowers and 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 Jiku, would you do anything different uh, in that? Well, you're still going to look at the Jiku first, and then depending on where the flower is, sometimes people like to move their fan and readjust their seat to look at the flower. Um, and then when you're finished looking at the flower, kind of readjust back to the scroll for the final bow there. If this mm. flower is under the jiku directly or really close to the center i don't really i don't like readjusting my fan two centimeters and turning <laughs> you know my my head and can turn just fine <laughs> <laughs> okay good and then after the uh, tema is yeah i don't know how d specific you want to get so you're standing up with your left foot from the toko because you're going to go down from there you're going into the fumikomi tatami with your left you take three steps so you go out of there with your right Mm. Maybe that's too much information. No, no, I think, I think that's perfect because uh, what I want this discussion in the next episodes to be is also a comparison for people to learn the difference from the schools. And if you gloss over mm -hmm. the areas where there's slightly differences, then... <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, then there's I, nothing to compare. Not going to be so helpful, at least. Mm -hmm. So let, let's assume for now that this is a, a raw setup. We have uh, Tana. There's a row set up and a tana. Mm. And you come to the Tamaisa, so no work. And it's the first time we came in the room. Yes, let's assume that. You only get tea in this gathering. No food. You, okay, and is there koicha or no koicha? Koicha. Let's go koicha first. 
<laughs> so it's a no food tea gathering with a flour and a jiku and a toko, but koicha. Yeah, yeah. We'll dive into the other okay. alternatives as we go along. Okay, this is one of the more rare scenarios. <laughs> yeah, let's start there. Okay, this is maybe good for like a Hatsudate seki where everything's gonna be at once. Anyway, uh, the way we generally do it is if there's a koicha container in the tamaiza, you look at it first when you sit down. So in a row, that means you would come in straight in the center of the mat, sit down looking at that tana with the chaire that's in front of it. Mm. After you've looked at that, then you turn to the kama, look at the kama, and wait there for the next person to be finished at the tokonoma. Mm. Okay. And all that, all that looking is from the sole position. And there's no bowing. Uh, with your fan in front, and no real bow, just looking with and, and intent. Th there was some an implication here that it would be different if this was a different setup, so let's just go through some of the alternatives. So if you came directly now to Usucha instead? Mm -hmm. So if it's Usucha or if it's uh, the first half of a Chaji where there's no tea going to be served, yep. um, so there, there may be a Usucha container on the Tana. Anyway, in, unless there's Koicha there, the way we've been doing it is look at the Kama first. Mm. So if there's no Tana, you look only have the kama to look at. If there's a mm. tana with usuki, you still ignore it. Look at the kama first, and then you can turn and look at the tana second. Mm. Mm. And it's reversed if there's a koicha container. Yeah, okay. Any guiding on, on what to look at or how to look at like the kama of furo? Uh, uh, either kama furo or even ro, you can, first of all, if you're the first guest, especially, as soon as you open the door, you want to look to see if the kama's wet, because that's just a nice bonus of being first. Sometimes <laughs> it dries out really fast. Mm. <laughs> um, if it's uh, chaji and it's full of cold water, then there's a better chance that it's going to stay wet for all the guests to come in. Yeah. Uh, it depends on how long it's been sitting there uh, again, so and how long a sekiiri takes. Mm. Anyway, look, a wet kama is a... Uh, rare thing to see so that's a really nice thing to look at because the skin of the comma is different when it's wet mm. um, then look at the the state of the ash i guess you could say um, if it's a row you might see wet shimeshibai down there uh, in the furo you're gonna want to look at the nice shape uh, this is the only time where it's you know imperfect uh, uh, imperfect no, I don't want to. We make it imperfect during the Tsumitamai. Mm. So, this is the only time where there's no blemishes or whatever. Uh, yep. Yep. So, look at the shape, look at the form, look at the handiwork that was put into the ash and the. Maybe sometimes you can see some Tsumi. <laughs> there's no handiwork there with Shtabi. But if you're coming in for a Chakai, um, then maybe you can see more. And if it's electric, just ignore all that. <laughs> if it's a, it's a actually an important point. When if it's electric, purposefully ignore it, right? Like, look at the furo and the kama as one, mm. kind of. You know, don't focus on the fact that oh, this is just electric. <laughs> don't ever let yourself think about those negatives. Mm. Um, you know, it's either the best case for that situation or it's the only thing that they can do or it's the only thing that they want to do for this uh, you know so you just have to think about this is still the best the host could do for this situation so I'm gonna enjoy it so then yeah then you purposefully ignore the things that maybe aren't the best hmm. cool. it's the same with a, a whole tea room right not everybody in the world's got great tea spaces. You don't focus on the parts that are bad. Mm. Enjoy the effort that went into it. Instead. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy everything that there is and all the effort that went into it. So thinking especially about the, this uh, Temaisa, hiking of Temaisa, does that change when, if this is the second time you enter, right? Or 
okay, then some of the things you will have seen earlier in the event, but some things will be new. How do you mm-hmm. deal with that in, in, in that situation? Well, you want to absorb everything every time, right? So uh, look for all the small differences. Mm. Um, also pay attention to things that you may not get to um, handle during any kind of hike and later. Mm. So, you know, that's the time you're going to be closest to the Furosaki Byobu and the Tana and the uh, Furo, uh, you know, all those mm. things. That's, that, that's your chance to take, take in a closer look at all the things that are in the Tamiza that you won't get to handle. Good point. Um, yeah, and things like um, Robuchi uh, looks different from the host side than the guest side. Uh, yeah, just look for different, small different things that you don't get to see from the guest side. Yeah, and then ideally again in coordinated uh, way, you stand up, you walk somewhere. And it depends on a bit on how many guests and what type of room and all that. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Stuff um, and in just now, if if it's three guests, for instance, right, the second guest will be at the Tokonoma, the first guest will be at the Tamaisa, the last guest will have closed the the door, and everybody mm-hmm. stand. And first guest can ideally go to their permanent seat if that is uh, not in the way of uh, last guest seeing the Tokonoma. Yeah, I think ideally it's not the best to go to their permanent seat. Okay. In a in an ideal world, you still want to go to a temporary seat, and then all three move to the permanent seats together. That way, the uh, last guest doesn't feel like the first guest is really waiting for them mm. so much. Good point. So yeah, all the guests can sit together that way. So mm. by the time the third guest gets to the Tamiza, the first and second guests are sitting in their uh, temporary seats, and then when the last guest stands up, all three will stand up together and walk to their permanent seats. A lot of times, that's the um, how do you say it? That's that's when the guests, some of the guests, the first guest probably already thought about it, but some of the guests didn't think about where they're going to sit. <laughs> until <laughs> until they're walking to their permanent seat right there at the uh. end. Um, so anyway, that's it's a good moment because uh, if they didn't think about it well in advance, everybody's standing and able to kind of adjust where they're going Together. at the last uh, minute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> good. So we come to the seat, we sit down. Because I don't know about you, I don't like sitting down and then everybody's like oh no let's scoot over here if you're in a hakama especially yeah. uh, you know sliding around on the floor in a hakama it's better <laughs> if you're in the right place the first time <laughs> yeah I, I think that was a uh, good point i didn't think about it exactly like that before so uh, but it's also nice always nice to learn uh, new perspectives on it <laughs> uh, so we arrive at the at the seat and sit down then what? Okay, well, I didn't say anything about any footwork, but uh, I think you got it. It was the same footwork as leaving the toko mm. from the tamaiza. Everybody's going to get up from their left foot, walking down in the fumikomi with their left foot, three steps again, leaving there with the right. Um, yeah, so I think it generally walks two steps to a half mat, uh, crossing lines or half uh, envisioned half lines with the right foot when you go up the room and left foot when you go down the room as a general rule. Yeah. Right? Mm. yeah, most of the lines in the center of the room uh, are ignored um, and it's more important about the lines kind of on the edges. Mm. Um, there are times when we can still do the correct footwork going over the center lines too, but it's less important mm. for example in, in kagetsu we still usually make make it where we cross the correct foot in the middle mats but mm. even then not always uh, and like you said yeah uh, usually two steps per half mat uh, except when we're changing directions and then it's three yeah and that that will always be fumikomi tatami right 
Yeah, I mean, you can change directions in other places, but it's always in Fumikomi. Mm. And not always. <laughs> <laughs> when, you're fi when you're leaving the room at the end of the tea gathering, we're not there yet, but that's yeah. the one time we, we just continue with going down and it's only two steps. Mm. Good. But may maybe we'll get there by the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see how far we get. Depends on the <laughs> speed, I guess. Uh, yeah. There's lots. Yeah, and, and it's a thing, right? In a, when you do a keiko, generally you're sitting almost at a guest spot when mm -hmm. the exercise or practice start, and, and you don't do all this stuff. That, that is, yeah, you're already in your seat. Yeah, yeah and it's the seki iri is probably more, one of the more intense moments of guest uh, skills or activities. Uh, mm -hmm. That is is needed. Okay, so you sit down. You're in your spot. Yeah. So uh, what we do is keep our fan next to our right knee, like um, mm -hmm. parallel with your knee, so not above your knee, but to your side, parallel to the knee, uh, until the host shows up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know when the host shows up. When the host opens the door. For example, the guests will invite them in. Uh, so the first guest invites them in, and the uh, Teishu will slide in. And uh, then, it, yeah, it depends on the situation again. It's a Chaji or, or mm. Chakai, it's totally, totally different. Mm. Um, or Keiko. <laughs> uh, and, is it, let's just try some of the examples. Let's do the Chaji where the, the guest. The first guest invites the host into the room. The host slides into the room, and the first guest is going to put their fan in front of them and slide up a little bit and just say hello and thank you. And then they're going to slide back. And the second guest does the same. They put their fan out in front of them, slide up, uh, say hi, say thank you, and some you know personal comment if they want and they slide back and the last guest is the same and mm. um, usually at that point the last guest also says something like you know i'm here um to help if you need anything mm. uh, or the teishu might say say it first you know uh if i need anything uh, is it okay if i call on you mm. so any kind of you know we have to remember this is supposed to be talking to each other not reciting memorized lines yeah but definitely uh, anyway so everybody says hi everybody says let's work together and when they're all done the first guest is going to slide back out again and get a little bit more technical about what's been going on so they're gonna uh, say thank you and ask any questions about whatever the first guest wants to ask about up until that point. So it might be anything from Machiai scroll and utensils in the Machiai to whatever happened uh, in the garden on the way there. Mm. Uh, anyway, the important thing is this is your chance to talk about everything up until that point. Um, and then the last thing usually that we do is ask if the host would read us the scroll. So if you can read the scroll, you might say, you know, ah, oh, this is what I, I think is here. Is this right? You know, mm. uh, it, it doesn't matter how you do it. But anyway, you have to make sure that all the guests know what the scroll says. So mm. um, it's, it's always nice if the host reads it to you because then the, the, you might get some extra clues as to why the host... Uh, picked this scroll for the day mm -hmm. and yeah find out who wrote it and all that kind of th thing if the host knows so this is always kind of difficult uh, as a guest um, knowing what you can ask and what you sh shouldn't because um, in the west <laughs> yeah. a lot of times maybe we don't know uh, our, our own utensils that much or they're not really something that great um, that that should be asked about. Or, or e um, even that you might know all the things, but it doesn't give anything to the people listening to it. It's just, 
for me it often is like if I get like 10 names of people who made stuff that I've never heard, mm-hmm. heard of before I will yeah. for, forget all 10 but if you tell me that one special person that you want me to remember there's at least a chance mm. that I will uh, remember it yeah the good thing about makers names is like you said if it connects to the guests somehow so of course if something's made by somebody famous they may be heard of that person yes uh, if it's made by someone that all the guests know, or at least the, the first guest knows, then that's vital information. Yeah. Because that's, that's how you connect the utensils to the people, is uh, you know, direct knowledge of the maker. Yeah, so I, Otherwise, I yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're repeating names of people that nobody's ever heard of, nobody's going to remember. Um, the only time that that's maybe important is if it's in a big chakai and they actually get a printed um, kaiki. Mm. Uh, then if, you know, it's like, oh, I really liked that. I don't remember who, who made it. I would like to maybe go find something made by that person. And if mm. it's written on the kaiki, then, then you can look them up later or something. Yeah. I, I for my, my students in, in Norway, like to have them ask, more open-ended rounder questions Mm -hmm. like we're we're often this comes back later right but a good example is when when you've done hiking uh that that we're taught a certain series of questions to ask which is the what you'd probably want to know but since so often i end up feeling that uh, either as a host or as a guest that all of those details either as you said don't exist i don't know it doesn't give meaning that I often end up having a much rounder question. So yeah. in, instead of, can you read me the scroll? Who wrote it? Da, da, da. Can you tell me about the scroll? Because uh-huh. no, I'm opening up for, like, if if no one in the room knows Japanese, maybe, and the Japanese for the the scroll is, is difficult or isn't, yeah, don't evoke something for, for the people there. You don't really need to actually read it. You can talk about it, right? This is... yeah. And, and start that story and process of, of having a, a moment together um, instead of it being so scripted with, please read it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, maybe it's nice to always read it in Japanese just for the fact that, that it, that's what it says. Yeah. <laughs> it, that, it actually makes those, you know, sounds. Yeah. No, Although... No. Yeah. I wonder sometimes if uh, practitioners in China read it in the Chinese order with the Chinese pronunciation or if they also do it in Japanese. Hmm. I don't know. I should have asked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I like to avoid, as, as a guiding rule for, for guests, avoid asking questions that force the host to say they don't know. Yeah. So ask them in a way that gives them a, a sort of a out if if that is unavailable information. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or if you're just asking, uh, tell us about this, or, you know, if it's, if it's a host that you know pretty well, then maybe you're okay asking more of those questions they mm-hmm. don't know the answers to, <laughs> because you're actually interested in, in them and what they know about it, uh, mm. and, and they're not going to feel so put on the spot, like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Stop asking me questions like that. <laughs> you know, it's it's okay to just answer, well, this is everything I know about this. Yeah. And yeah. then nobody has to ask any more questions. <laughs> yes, yes, I agree. And it's like, this is my only not swim. That's what, that's what I know yeah. about it, right? <laughs> yeah. But maybe I want to talk about the shashaku because that's special. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, so uh, we did a greeting. Um, and I've seen it done like this in, in some chakais too, but, but often I've also seen it done as a uh, sore uh, type of thing, that the, 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 the host comes in and, and there's, you don't talk to everyone individually because there's 20 people in the room or whatever. And yeah, not, that's really not, a, just a chaji thing. Yeah, and it's not such a per- personal event. Uh, yeah. But then it, it's usually, mm, there's a bow, with everyone and and the first guest will still ask those questions 
Huh. If, in my opinion, if there's 20 people in the room, there's probably a sekishu, like a person in charge of talking to the guests, uh, that's different than the teishu. Yeah, good. And, and, and they're probably just, unless it's a shokyaku that really knows how to get the questions in, probably this person explaining things is already going to be talking, talking about <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, so that that's a variation though. It depends on the, yeah, the setting yeah. and and how much you can count on the first guest. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it really goes to show how you know, it's tough to be a first guest no matter what the situation. Even if uh there's a sekishu whose whole job is to just talk to you and give you all the information and not even make you ask about it, you still have to try to keep some kind of conversation up and a flow. Uh, so that people don't just feel like they're at a lecture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we've done the greeting. Uh, it's probably time for some tea. Yeah. So generally, people don't talk that much during the tea making, um, unless there's this sekishu person. Am yeah. I saying the right one? Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know. Nothing. I, I really like, and I, and then this day I will tell people if if we're doing usucha so during the the sort of the introduction um, with the host, I u- will usually ask for silence during the tea making, even if it's usucha. So I will usually say something as a host to the effect that one of the things that is important for me with tea is the the meditation part, the coming together in a special experience. And in order to get that, I would like us to to postpone any questions to after we've had tea. Yeah, I like that. Uh, in a chaji situation, usually everybody knows yeah. the koicha making part is more quiet and the ustcha mm-hmm. making part is a little bit less strict that way. And yeah, I think you're right. If it's, if it's just an ustcha making seki, it'd be really nice if people could have a contemplative moment while mm. the deep making procedure happens. Hmm. So, so if you're thinking about the guest etiquette, um, what would happen next depends, of course, where we are and, and stuff like that. But uh, if you assume we're now... I see, see some options. If, if it's food, there's, <laughs> there's lots of stuff happening. It's too detailed, I think, to, to dive yeah. into. Food, but, just eat everything they bring you. Okay, yeah. next. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and if 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 now if, if for some reason this was was koicha, you'd probably have some sweets uh, served. Uh, if it's if if there's only one seki, right? And so you you come in, you get koicha, you do such. Yeah, no matter thing. what, no matter what, if you're coming to a, a tea gathering with no food, uh, they're gonna give you sweets at this point. Yeah. Right. If it's koicha or, or usucha. That was much better put than I I managed. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, and here the, the the sweets get set down, and the host scoots a bit back, and there will be a bow, right? From uh, and and who's bowing? Are everyone who's going to eat these sweets bowing, or just the first guest receiving them on behalf of everyone? Or yeah, it's only the person who gets the bowl put in front of them. So if, like you said, there's twenty people, they might bring. If it's like. Kashibachi, if it's omogashi mm-hmm. for for the koicha, and they put one at the first guest and one at the sixth guest, or or you know one in the, every mm-hmm. five people, mm-hmm. um, whoever gets a bowl in front of them, they're gonna bow to the person who gives it to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it's just the first guest, then it's just the first guest. Mm-hmm. And anyway, be ready to bow. Anytime somebody gives you something, they're probably gonna bow. You should bow back. Yeah, that's g- good guest etiquette. Is always bow when you're bowed to. But but what I find is is some of the confusion uh, with less experienced guests is when not to bow, right? In the case here that the the person handing the bowl of sweets and the person receiving the sweets are bowing, the mm-hmm. person next to should sit still. Yeah, they don't need to bow. Yeah, so so that's also there's some places where you shouldn't bow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's uh, hard to say because the I would say there's never anything wrong with bowing. Mm. You're, it's not like you're wrong to bow. Mm. You just don't need to. Huh. And it may confuse people. Uh, a lot of 
yeah, people who don't know, if they see the shokyaku bow, they're just going to bow mm. because they're trying to pay attention and do what the first guest does. Mm. And th- in that case, that's okay. But yeah, once you practice more, then you find out only the person who's getting something in this situation needs to bow. Mm. So if you want to know, don't bow mm. <laughs> at that point. If you're not getting something, don't bow. Mm. There's a few things that we call sore, uh, where it's everyone bowing together. Yeah. And then it's just you have to learn those those times. Yeah. So back to the suite. You go into suite. And if it's uh, omogashi, um, then what? Uh, yeah, at this point, it doesn't matter, right? Omogashi or higashi, um, you're going to, well, the thing that matters is if it's a, a chaji. We're just, I think we're pretty much going on the assumption that this is a chakai, right? Um, and yeah, the thing think, with the yeah. chakai. Yeah, if it's omogashi, the, this is definitely a chakai at this moment. Yeah. Um, the thing is, if there's more than one host, like if there's hantos or what we call hakobi people, think people bringing stuff into the room. Mm. Uh, if there's more than only the first sweet tray or bowl or box, uh, then that means people are also going to bring tea from the back. Mm. And what that means is you can't wait your turn to eat your sweets. It means everybody needs to eat their sweets because you don't know when you're going to get your tea and who they're going to bring the tea to. Mm. Because obviously the first guest is going to get the tea from the tamiza and probably at least the first couple. Uh, But after that, you don't know where they're going to go. (laughs) Yeah, but also the serving order might be out of whack because uh, the tatadashi might start a bit earlier than all the bones that comes from the... From the Temaisa already. Um, yeah, so yeah. What, what are we saying? If as you, a guest, you don't know, as a guest, you, should, you don't know where they're going to serve the bowls. Mm-hmm. Like you said, they're going to come out of whack, out of order. You have no idea. Mm-hmm. The people come bringing the bowls from the back might have no idea. It depends on how much experience they have. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to be ready, right? Yep. So the rule here is, uh, we didn't get our sweets yet, but I'm just going to say it now anyway because we're talking about it. The rule is if the first guest takes their sweet and eats it, you should follow suit mm. in this in this situation. Don't wait. Mm. And the first guest has to not wait. If they're told to take and eat their sweet, they need to take and eat their sweet because none of the other guests are going to do it until the first guest does it. So that being said, if you've got sweets in front of you, you can say osaki ni to the person next to you. Mm-hmm. Excuse yourself for going before them, right? Mm-hmm. You do that with a gyo bao in our school. Mm-hmm. So guest to guest is a gyo bao. Then you're going to do kancha. So that's raising the sweets or whatever you're doing, raising this thing up in appreciation. And this doesn't mean over your head. It doesn't mean <laughs> up at your eye height. It means, you know, five, max ten centimeters off the ground Mm. and then back down. Uh, You don't know what's in this thing that you're lifting up, okay? Don't mess it up. Lift it up carefully. Set it down carefully. Not too high. Um, That's a kancha. And then, depending on what kind of sweet it is, anyway, you're going to need your kaishi probably. So you take your paper... Your kaishi, you put it out in front of you. You may or may not have kuromoji to take uh, sweet with. There might be big ones to use as hashi to take it with. There might be dry sweets to take it with your hand. Um, I don't know. Do you want? Should no, I try and with words that, explain like, how to use those utensils? <laughs> but, but I think let, let's do it like if there's a kuromoji, you're going to use it to pick up the sweet. And you're going to use it to eat the sweet, right? If there's yeah, one kuromoji for every, every guest. Yeah. It, and this, this is something that uh, I, I just have a little bit of a thing to say about this. If each person is, is served on a memezara, mm. that's a small plate with an individual sweet with an individual plate for each person with a kuromoji on it. Mm. 
that doesn't necessarily mean pick the plate up and start chopping up your sweet on there. Um, because some of these memezara can be priceless utensils as well. Um, and then what are you going to do? Hand back a plate with, you know, beans mushed all over it. Uh, so the best thing to still do, sometimes it's okay, you know, it depends. But anyway, the most polite thing to do at this point, still get out your kaishi. Take the sweet off the small plate and eat it off your kaishi. Just do it as a courtesy. Mm. Uh, you'll, you'll thank yourself <laughs> later. Mm. Okay, I've seen people chopping up sweets on, you know, fifth generation Raku Memezara. And it's like, okay, now we got to take those back and scrub <laughs> off all these beans. <laughs> Uh, and it's, it's not nice to the utensil. Mm -hmm. if, it's a, if it's a modern plate from Ikea, uh, <laughs> chop it up. I don't care. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it, it's about the respect for the utensil, right? It, it's always nice. Take it off. Eat it off your own kaishi. Yeah, so this is a rule from Rikyu. If the memesara goes in the dishwasher, you can uh, use it as a plate. <laughs> yeah. If it can't go in the dishwasher, you should use your kaishi. Uh, Kaishi. Yeah, that's pretty. That's a pretty good one. It's, I, I remember that from the Riku Shakushu. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so we weren't there yet. No. Um, okay. And then taking the sweet yeah. off of that thing, bowl, whatever, you do it with your right hand, and your left hand follows it back to your kaishi. That's just some small thing. Pass it on to the next person, and in this situation, just eat it, mm. right? Put on your kaishi, pick up your kaishi, and eat it. Okay, everybody says osaki, everybody has kancha, kaishi, and then the sweets. Pass it down. It gets to the end. The, you know, you've got an empty one in front of you. If you're not the last guest, what do you do? You just sit there and wait. Okay, if you're really polite, you can turn it, give it back to whoever comes to take it. Um, you'll bow when they take it, just the person who's giving it back. Mm. Uh, if it ends up empty and there's only one uh, and it's at the last guest, um, just really depends on the situation. If the door is closed, the last guest can put an empty bowl back at the door. Because then, obviously, somebody's going to open it and take it. Uh, lots of weird little things. Uh, if there's people in the back who are going to do something, you can put empty things in the middle of the door. Uh, if the only person doing any of the moving stuff is the teishu, and you're putting something empty back, put it start in the corner. Mm. And then, because uh, they might have something in their hand they have to put in front of them when they're leaving. This is just small weird things for lots of different situations. Sorry, I'm just randomly throwing <laughs> things out there. It's good. <laughs> but but uh, just we said now we were we're at a chakai. But but just let's talk a little bit about the sweets in a in a chaji for for koicha, just so okay. we have have covered it right. So a lot of things will be the same, but there's also some differences. Or there can be. Yep. Yeah, so uh, what do you want to, you want to do standard? Yeah, let's just go what through we, the standard. So we, we know how okay. it's going to be done uh, in a chaji. Yeah, so our, our standard koicha sweet taking method is in a... Uh, stacked box? I love, I love it when my brain does that. Yeah, that's stacked box. Yeah. <laughs> so there's generally one layer of box per guest as long as there's not too many and anyway that means that there's one suite or one set of suites for each guest in each layer and uh, that means in our example here that we've had three guests there should be three layers of this stacked box with three kuromoji placed on the top mm. so again the first guests well if this was an achaji it's not going to be the same so anyway no, but this, this, you get the boxes, the host goes to the door, right? Yeah. And yeah, then so there's that's, It's a big difference, right? Don't yeah. bow 
when you're given the boxes, the guest, the host is going to go back to the door and bow from there. Mm -hmm. It's very strange. It's exactly the opposite of what we were just talking about. Um, at that point, they'll ask you to take your sweets and do something else, like go out to the garden, for example, yeah. and then they leave. And if you, if yeah, taking the sweets follows the same kind of rules. The first guest says, pardon me for going before you, does kancha with the whole stack of boxes, mm -hmm. then leaves the bottom one on the ground, lifts up the other ones, turns it ever so slightly counterclockwise while they're looking in there to see what's there, making sure there's one s set up for one guest. Mm -hmm. Place the other ones on an uh, angle back on the top so that you can take your one kuromoji and slide it in the front right corner of the bottom box. At that point, you just send the rest of the boxes down. Mm -hmm. And... You take out your kaishi, use that kuromoji to help move the sweet to the kaishi. Keep your kuromoji between the sweet and you on the kaishi. And it's nice to do a little quick hiking of the of the box before you pass it down, the empty mm. box. Mm. But you in the end pass it down and then the next guest will do yeah, the same. The next right? guest is the same. Uh, last guest keeps the lid off because uh, there's not an extra layers, right? So mm -hmm. take off the lid, set it to the side. Well, it's going to do the same. You can s turn the lid to the angle, mm -hmm. put the kuromoji in, and then set the lid down to the side. Take out the sweet, do your haiken, put the lid back on, move your box to the left, and... Essentially, what you're going to end up with is putting all the boxes back stacked together the way they were in the beginning. So the first guest will be on the bottom, the last guest will be on the top. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then there's different ways of doing this. One way or another, <laughs> it's eating time. Generally, generally speaking, what's going to happen is the guests want to eat those sweets together. So the first guest doesn't eat right away. The last guest is going to go ahead and move those boxes to the door, come back, and then they can all eat their sweets together. Mm. They'll say, let's eat together. And then they pick up kaishi and eat the sweets. There's versions where you want to move faster, where the first guest might just start eating right away. It's not the standard Mm. way that people are doing it right now everybody likes to wait and eat together mm. cool. if you think of, if think about the flow and moving things along the quickest uh, you could start eating fast but almost all the main dishes in the kaiseki everybody waits and starts eating together so this is kind of just the last dot on that right yeah they can eat it together even though it's not the most efficient time-wise. Mm. So anyway, then they eat. Good. Let's not dive in in all the chaji etiquette uh, after that, but let's go back to our chakai, right? So sweets, mm. sweets are now eaten. Uh, tea starts. Uh, depending on on if it's usucha or koisha, there will be... Oh, wait, this is guest etiquette. Let's tell people what they do with their used kaishi. <laughs> oh, yeah, good point. <laughs> Frame it. Uh, so, yeah, usually what we do is fold over um, the kaishi, uh, keeping all the dirty part wrapped up in the center of one, and, and then keeping the clean kaishi separate. So separate the dirty ones from the clean ones, fold them up so that the dirty part's in the middle. If you've got a kuromoji, you can oftentimes figure out a way to fold that where the dirty part of kunomoji stays in there too. Um, and different people have different ways of doing this. Um, I, for example, put all that in my left sleeve, the dirty mm. stuff. Um, a lot of times I'll see people wrap that up nicely and put it back in the center of their kaishi and then put it back in their 
kaiju in their ki- front of their kimono. Yep. Uh, so it just depends on your personal preference and how you like to do that. I, I understand people don't like a sharp stick in their sleeve, but <laughs> mm, maybe I don't want a sharp stick in my tummy either. Tummy either. So <laughs> yeah, it just depends on what works best for you. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, dirty things get put aside uh, in a way so that they don't get any of your clothes dirty. And then your kaishi goes back into your front of your kimono. Hmm. And then there's some tea served. So if you're the first guest and, and the tea bowl is put out for you. Just, and, just hang on. Right? Uh, no matter what happens, there's a bow with all the guests and the host. It's either the host opens the door, Ipikusashi Agamas, or it's uh, Hishaku goes down on the futa oki for koicha, and then everybody bows. Yeah. Okay. So that... I, I thought that was already started in my mind in our, in our chakai. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. When the teishu comes in, there's the bow for everyone. And that's one of those sores we were talking about, right? Mm. So everybody bows together with the host. Um, a lot of times in a chakai, that part happens before the sweets. Yep. Uh, and then they'll bring the sweets actually while the tea's already being made. Mm. Uh, but if it's the host who brought the sweets mm. themselves, then yeah, they bring it in and the sweets just sit there for a while until uh, somebody tells you to start eating them. Yeah. So Which actually isn't a rule either. That's something we do in Keiko and as a kind of a set standard way where when the host takes the tea scoop, they say, please have your sweets. Mm. And really what people need to know is that's really the last moment that you should yep. be thinking about yep. taking your sweets. You can take them any time before that. It's okay. Mm. And the, the, the procedure is much the same, right? If if you just quickly go through, let's assume that we go to the point where the host say, pick up the shashaku or kashi o doso, this is the last time to eat the sweet. There will still be like osaki ni, kansha. Yeah, everything same, that we talked same about procedure. before. Yeah. The tray gets moved on to the next person. The next person don't necessarily grab it immediately. Um, unless they're going to eat yeah, immediately. That's, yeah, it's, it's a big difference. You have to know your situation, and hopefully the first guest will make sure that everybody knows. Um, you know, we, we have some tea-making procedures where we actually make the second guest drink first, uh, and then, you know, the first guest has to tell them, okay, you have to take your sweet and eat it now. Uh, because otherwise, it's, you know, you're not going to have a chance. Yeah. Um, or like we were talking about in a chakai, when there's going to be more tea bowls coming out from the back sooner than you expect, everybody has to go ahead and take their suite right away. Hmm. So the, the standard chaji way or where all the tea bowls come from the host in the tamaiza is where you can... Take your sweet as your bowl of tea is being made. Mm. And any other situation, you have to take your sweet in advance. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And like you said, if you're gonna make if you're gonna take your sweet while your bowl is being made, you don't have to take the sweet tray until your bowl of bowl is being worked on. Well, uh, yeah, with, take, with one slight yeah. exception in my mind. And that is if the <laughs> if the bowl of sweets is in any way impeding the other guests yeah. to get to their tea bowl, then you should, yeah. as close as possible up to they need to go to get their tea bowl, like, oh, yeah, let me, me move that out of your way. Because this, depending on, on the size of the room, how far apart you sit, and how tightly you've wound your kimono up, <laughs> <laughs> right? it's not necessarily that the guests next to you do have like the... He, what do you call it? Stomach rotation ability to move the tray uh, a long way. So this is just yeah. be polite and help them get it out of the way, uh, or or grab it when you need it, whichever comes first. Yeah, and this is all a little bit too based on your own experience level. So if you can tell that something's in somebody's way, obviously you want to move it. Um, the thing we try to work on too with experience is just don't look like you're greedy, mm-hmm. right? Like, I want my sweet now. Um, 
<laughs> Even though uh, so, the know. idea is, yeah, everybody wants it, right? <laughs> Ooh, look, that looks nice. <laughs> um, so, if you don't have to move something, then don't. Uh, if you need to move something, you still don't have to do it immediately. Mm. You just have to be aware and get it out of the way before it's in the way. Mm. And maybe that means as soon as you think of it, because then you're going to forget it later. And then you're like, oh, I meant to move that. And now it's in that person's way and, and you're rushing to get it out of the way. So it, it, it kind of depends on your experience and awareness level. So if you think of it and that's the best time to do it because that's when you thought of it, then that's still better than doing it late. Yeah. Get things out of other people's way. That's always the polite thing to do. That's part of the respectful attitude that we have as guests. Try to make yourself out of the way and help other people uh, when they need it. Mm. Okay, so we've had sweets. It's time for tea. Let's let's do kocha first, uh, and let's. Okay. Uh, I wanna think that we have a tea bowl. It's not raku, so that's gonna the host is gonna put out a kobuksa with the tea bowl. Uh, okay. Just because it's easier. If it's raku, the host won't put out a kobuksa and. Just ignore everything that we said about Kobuksa and you'll probably be fine. <laughs> <laughs> right? So let's do the a bit more complex uh, thing. So that means from the guest perspective, you will have a tea ball and um, left side of it, you will have the Kobuksa, right? Yes. So you, you scoot forward to get it, then what? Okay, if we're scooting, because it's a little different for standing, uh, if you're scooting, then you scoot up to the bowl. Think about... There's only a bowl, so have the bowl being directly in front of you, bring the bowl back to you, and then bring the kobuksa back. It stays on the left. We're saying left because we're assuming that it's a uh, hongate room and the tokonoma is in the upper half of the room and not in the bottom half of the room. Because the left side kobuksa is really the lower side. It's not about left and right. It's the low side. Yeah, okay. Yep. Um, so anyway, that's going to be off to the left and scoot back again. Just keep bringing the bowl to your center. Bring the kobuksa back. Uh, once you're in your mat, bring the bowl just outside the mat, bring the kobuksa back to just outside the mat. Then make sure that you're at your 16 lines back from the heady. Leave the bowl out there where it is. Bring the kobuksa inside to your right, between your knee and the heady, outside of your personal space, like, I don't know how to say it, to the left of your of your knee and between your knee line and the heady. Left of the knee, so that, you should first said right and then left, so let's just clarify that one. Right, to the right. Yep, yep. <laughs> I don't even remember saying left. Yep. Yeah, it's to the right of your right knee yep. and above your knee line. Good. But inside your mat. Yes. Okay, then take the bowl, put it to your left, between you and the next guest. Mm -hmm. And this is a bow amongst guests. I'd say sore, but the host doesn't bow here. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a guest bow. For everyone who's going to uh, drink from this bowl, right? For everyone, that's almost right. Because uh, if it's... <laughs> If it's Kasane Jawan and you're not going to drink from this bowl, you still bow at this point. Uh, uh, so this is all the guests are going to bow at okay. this point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then the bowl comes back in front of you, still inside the line. And you're going to ask permission, if you want, to use the Kobuksa uh, under bowl. There's... There's no rule that says you have to use their kobuksa. Uh, you can use your own, but if you're going to use theirs at this point, we say, please, uh, I'm going to use this if, if it's really okay. You gave it to me, so I'm assuming it's okay. I'm going to use it. This, this, I feel, is the worst part of the Urasenki guest etiquette. Uh, really? The single point that uh, I would uh, ignore. Bec the, this, hmm. the reason for it is, it's first of all, I g the host gave you the kobuksa. They want you to mm -hmm. use it, right? Mm -hmm. They gave it to you, like, with the bowl. It's not like you ask, oh, can I use the bowl to drink the tea? You gave me the bowl with the tea in it. 
you gave me the Cobux, uh, of course you want me to use it. So that's point number one, why I don't like it. And point number two is that it's such an annoying thing to have be the first thing said during Koicha. I would much <laughs> rather have the first thing being said by the, in the Koicha be, was it satisfactory? Mm -hmm. So that was my personal rant, but uh, otherwise it's uh, Kobuksa Haishaku Itashimasu or something Yeah, like I think we've, we've, we, we tried talked about that before. Yeah. yeah. I, I like... I like your rant because <laughs> I agree about the words like mm. I try to avoid a lot of extra talking in the tea room anyway um, and yeah this like you said they gave it to it the express purpose of giving it, <clears throat> of using it and <clears throat> it's not really even asking for permission it's kind of saying I'll go ahead and use this um, kobuksa that you gave me mm. But proper way um, is to, 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 to do it. So, let's yeah, well, this is the standard phraseology yeah. that we, we teach each other. But yeah. um, I, I think if you wanted to just do a slight bow there without any talking and use it, I think that would be okay too. Mm. If you really wanted to save those first special words. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Um, but And really, uh, sometimes I don't, I don't even know how I feel about this. Like you said, I give it to people to use because I plan on them using it. I've also got the, my Kobuksa back with Koicha all over it uh, and made me think, hmm, I probably shouldn't have given it to <laughs> And, you know, it's just, a, it's just a utensil. It's not like it's the end of the world. But say you did choose a special one for that, uh, from that specific gath gathering, then it's kind of, uh, eh, it just made yeah. it more special, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's a memory of that gathering there. <laughs> but then you pick up the kobuksa, put it on your hand, open it. Pick up the kobuksa, put it on your left hand, open it like a Japanese book, bring the chawan, put it on there, do your kancha, turn the bowl. Again, we're not like, to... just to, the kancha, there's a couple of things I see with the kancha, right? It's, it's what you said in the beginning, it's lift it above your head, <laughs> type of Turn around three times. Yeah, it, it's a very slight thing, right? It's yeah. in front of you, uh, different hand position, holding it from the side, and a slight uh, raising. Yeah. And also, I feel it. And this might not be what we're supposed to do, but for me, it, it's also a slight movement of the body forward. And I often find like my eyes get closed at this moment in a reverence for all the stuff that went into the the tea that i'm gonna have now yeah so you know it's exactly it's it's hard to describe motion i'm not raising the bowl i'm not bowing but it's something in between both hmm. uh, my hands stay almost at the same height as i just slightly lean forward right hmm. so it feels like you're lifting it because your body is going down hmm. Um, but basically, yeah, it's all kind of staying in the same height. Um, and it's not too big of a movement. Mm. And yeah, it's showing an appreciation for everything uh, that went into that, you receiving that bowl. Yeah, good. And, and like you said, the hand, the hand position is basically as if you're walking, carrying it. So left hand under and right hand open on the side. And after that kancha, we rehold with our right hand so that the thumb is on the top and the fingers are down at the kodai. And probably we can just say it, um, lift the bowl up off the kobuksa when you turn it. And, and uh, it, otherwise, and this you know, goes the everywhere, kobuksa goes with it. Right? It, it, there is nothing in the tea room except your foot that is slid along the, uh, the tatami or whatever it's it goes like you have many places in the temai and stuff where things get moved very short distances but in all mm -hmm. cases it's lift them off whatever they're on then do what you're supposed to do um, yeah things don't slide on the tatami and things don't turn on the kobuksa yeah 
Uh, if you're, if you're going to turn the kobuksa on purpose, then you usually are doing it on the floor and turning the kobuksa and the utensil together. Yeah. that's with it. Uh, yeah. There are some times where we turn a bowl on a kobuksa on the floor and not the kobuksa. So in that case, you're thinking about it the same way as what you're describing. Yeah. Everything mm -hmm. we do, we turn by lifting it, turning it, setting it back down. Uh, and that's the same if there's no kobuksa in your hand, right? You lift the bowl, turn it, and set it down. You don't just spin it mm. in your hand without mm. without lifting it. And, and here the, the thinking is that the host had the, the bowl facing them while preparing tea. They put it out so that it faces you when you come to get it. And you get it back, then of course you still have it with the front toward you, and now you're going to drink. So you're going to turn it so that the front, you're not drinking from the front anymore. Yeah, yeah. There's really that's the really the best way to say it. You're turning it so you're not drinking from the front. Um, it's become very codified in the way that many things do. So generally speaking, the way people teach it is you're turning it two times clockwise, ninety degrees one turn and ninety degrees the second turn, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it it doesn't have to be so specific if 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 your teacher tells you that then just do it <laughs> uh, but i find a lot of times there's many different things to think about when you're turning the bowl to drink out of um, sometimes there's you know a picture on the far side yeah. i don't want to drink from that picture either mm. sometimes the shape of the bowl tells me you know exactly 180 degrees from the front isn't a good place to drink from uh, so I'm going to turn it to a place, you know, like a shoe-shaped bowl. Uh, you want to drink from the from the narrow end, not a wide end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so, so I think it's a good thing. Just turn it so that uh, it's not from the front, and uh, like avoid other decorative things or practical things. But uh, the standard rule, as you said, is is turn it twice, ninety degrees yeah. each time. Um, but like I have a Tenmoku tea bowl that I, I always use it so that the nicest side, because that's on the inside, it has like a big colory thing on the inside of, of running glaze. But that is, is in the way we place the bowl, it's on the back side. And uh -huh. almost every guest I give it to end up avoiding drinking from it uh, hmm. naturally. Because it's you look at it and it's like that side is the most beautiful side. I'm going to just drink <laughs> a slightly off from that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's, you know, two turns is just nice mm. feel. I you know, one turn is okay too. Uh so yeah, the idea is let's just think about direction. Turn it clockwise so that you don't drink from the front. Because after you're done drinking, you turn it the other way, counterclockwise to get back to the front. Whether it's one turn, two turns, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, you know, it's it's all variable, but yeah. the biggest thing is, <clears throat> since we're talking about urasenke uh, etiquette, is generally speaking, two turns clockwise, so that you don't drink, don't drink from the front. Yeah. And then what? You take a sip. Hooray! Finally, yeah, uh, hour later, we got a sip of tea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is uh, that is true. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, you got one sip, and then you get asked in Urasenki, the, the host will ask if the tea was okay. Yeah. Uh, and so the standard way of answering is by keeping your left hand under the bowl, your right hand goes down to the ground in the so position, and you answer if the tea was satisfactory or not. Yeah. <laughs> Generally speaking, we answer in the affirmative. Mm. Um. Yeah, and I, but I, I want to stress here as a as a real piece of guest etiquette, if there's something wrong with the tea that the host can fix, mm. now is a good time to tell them. I've also done it as a first guest where I just said, it's great, I finished drinking my part, and then I sent it back to the host to fix for the rest of the guests. Uh, so anyway, it's, yeah, it's possible yeah. to give the bowl back mm. if it's needed. So I, f I feel that the, the only things that, in quotes, could be wrong at this point 
is it is too thick, right? The, it it's going to be impossible for the last guest to drink because it's it's too thick. Yeah. Uh, or there's lumps that too thick or too lumpy. I think that's uh, a pretty much the only things because, that can be fixed. Because if it's too thin, it's like there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I already put all the tea in there. That's it. Sorry. Yeah. So so those are the two options. And then yeah. uh, you do that slight slight acknowledgement. So it's a uh, you're holding your tea bowl, uh, hand touching the ground, slight bow. It's it's fine or uh, whatever you want to say at that point. Um, yeah. I almost feel like, then, feel like you don't need to say that if if you don't say anything, it means it's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, it's one of those like cut and paste phrases that we are. We learn, um, which sometimes is nice, and especially I think it's nice for newer tea practitioners or even you know non practitioners, because it gives them something to kind of revolve around, you mm. know. So the guests are asked if it's good. Okay, why? Why are the guests asked if it's good? Mm. Uh, it, there, there must be a real reason, right? It's not, it's not just because we memorize saying something no. there. But, so the host really cares if the tea is is good. But personally, I feel like this is not the time to give feedback on the like the tea powder in itself. In a way, I feel like no, that, you're right. That yeah, comes a bit later. Time. This is just. Yeah. The, can I do anything to fix it or make it better at this point? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No or yes type of Yeah, move basically on. you could you could say the question is uh is it too thick or lumpy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and also I feel like in a way this is the highlight of of why you're here. So do enjoy it, but also if you to take too long time now, the answer is not to that question is it too thick especially is might change for the last guest. So it also yeah. needs to be a certain drive of efficiency here in that um, the, the tea thickens quite quickly when it, it chills down. Um, yeah, so just uh, get back to drinking, enjoy it, but be efficient. It's very mm. important to be quick and efficient uh, during koicha drinking. Mm. Okay, so yeah, you don't you don't want the other guests to have cold tea, thick tea, too thick tea, um, and again, it's it's drawing things out unnecessarily is never a good idea in a tea gathering because they can get too long. And and here you're gonna, <clears throat> you're gonna have if it's koicha three sips, but more important you're gonna have your portion of the tea. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, drink your. Your save. portion, one third or whatever it is. Uh, so save something from the for the last person, uh, and also don't leave everything for the last person. Yeah, it's nice. Again, it's thinking about the others, right? You're trying to make it even. Everybody mm -hmm. should get the same amount of tea. Mm -hmm. You know this uh, fukukagan. I the asking of if the tea is satisfactory or sufficient. <clears throat> I really don't think. I I. Unless there's something wrong with the tea, I never, I, I mean, unless the tea is too thick or too lumpy, I don't consider that question about if the tea is satisfactory as far as physical manifestation. You know, I mean, it's not a, really about if it's thick or lumpy to me, because if it's not thick or lumpy, I still think it's a nice question. And because assuming that the tea is not thick or lumpy, the question is more like, are you satisfied with, I'm not even, it's not a question of satisfaction. It's, it's like, is your mind, not mindset here enjoying this tea this day? Mm. You know, that's really what it is. Like, like you said, this is the highlight of the day of tea. Mm. And this is kind of like, it's good, right? We're here together at this moment. You just finally had the tea. This is it. Mm -hmm. And your answer is, yeah, I'm here. This is great. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah, it really isn't about the specifics of, you know, tea consistency and all that kind of stuff. Mm. There is a practical element that this is a good time to fix it, but 
Mm. Assuming all things are good, the question is really about, isn't this a great moment to live? Mm. <laughs> right? <laughs> and the answer is, yeah. <laughs> good. So you, you've had your tea. You're now left with, uh, you know, we're set up of three people, like a, a one, uh, two-thirds filled tea bowl uh, on your kovuksa. Uh, but you need to prepare it for the next guest. Yeah, so the way we do it in our school is the first guest sets everything down so the tea bowl stays on the kovuksa, and then you take out some kind of Kochakin. And it's set now or outside or inside the... Your it's still inside, inside the line in your mat. Mm -hmm. And you take some form of cleaning. Usually it's a kochakin. And that's in a kochakin ere. So you've got a small cleaning cloth in a little pouch somewhere mm -hmm. in your kaichu, in your kimono. You take it out mm -hmm. and with a few um, well-practiced wipes... <laughs> You clean this bowl of, the, of tea from exactly where you drank. So don't... If there's a huge mess, it's actually okay for the first guest to clean something. Like if there was tea powder spilled all over it, it's going to make a mess as you pass it down. That's the first guest's job to take care of. But assuming there's no other messes, all you're doing is cleaning from right where you drank. Not too deep. We're not into wasting tea. It's not about cleaning the whole bowl out. It's just cleaning where your lips touched. Yeah, and I think bowl. think that's important that you don't want the other guest's tea to end up in your sleep, right? So uh, unnecessary. Yeah. Cleaning. They're supposed to drink that. Yeah, yeah. So unnecessary cleaning at this point is is not really helpful. It's remove where you drank, and then that's enough. If there's no mess yeah. that that will cause problems. But a uh, tea yeah. on the inside of the bowl is not a problem at this stage. No, it's supposed to be there. Yeah, uh, yeah in our school, yeah. everybody drinks from the same place. So if you clean down too deeply, then the tea has to like recover that yeah. path as it goes out. So it, it, it's a waste, like yeah. you said. And uh, here, I feel like this is also some of the areas you should practice a lot so you're super efficient and if mm -hmm. if like in a perfect world you put everything away and then you go to the next stage but i feel that it's also uh if if you have if you say if you can't do that quickly or or like the the, the chucking is causing you trouble you might also want to leave it in my mind it's that and then i mean like depending on on how you set this up if if you had a Kochak in basami, and it's difficult to get the thing in there. Maybe just put the chuck in on the course, uh, the kochak in basami on the side and get the T ball moving, and then you can deal with your own little issue afterwards. Uh, I know that's yeah, not the like, yeah. teaching, and if you know you're likely to fumble this, I would say put your kaishi next to you so that you have a place to put your mess while you get the T ball going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, first of all, cleaning the tea bowl shouldn't be messy. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, so like we've said now, this will be the third time. Practice it enough <laughs> that you can do it in a nice way. It shouldn't make a huge mess. Uh, and quickly and efficiently put those things away. But I agree with what you're saying, too. If worse comes to worse, or you know that you're terrible at cleaning the bowl... And I'm not talking about cleaning the bowl. I'm talking about cleaning that tiny rim of the mouth of the bowl where you drank from. Uh, then, yeah, it's perfectly good. I, I don't know about having your kaishi, like one extra sheet of kaishi to just kind of throw that tea mess that you made into to get it out of the way where it's not going to get tea anywhere else. Is, and then, is it one like you said, the, the important thing is... Clean it quickly and pass it on. And and here I see that often people in kimono are more efficient than people in Western clothes because they, they tend to put everything back in their little folder. And and that's where mm. my, my comment came from is that in preparation for this, right, in advance, you have pulled out your if you have that in a in a folder or in a purse, you know you're gonna use it. 
it can go on your side in my mind before you get the t-ball and if yeah. you don't need to put everything back in your folder and uh, tuck it into your purse or whatever before passing on the t-ball but for, for kimono mm -hmm. it is sort of it works very efficient it, yeah. one easy movement you have your uh, kochaki and basumi out you do the wiping stick it back there put it in the left sleeve on it goes but if yeah. if for some reason you're doing something else see if you can speed it up uh, mm -hmm. yeah i've i've been a uh, guest for example at koicha seki where i wasn't going for tea necessarily so i'm in western clothes none of my utensils so just with two pieces of kaishi you know you can fold one for wiping the bowl and the other one you have ready to use as an envelope to stick the dirty one into and like you said you just have it on your side we didn't say about this but first guest puts everything at their side away from the other guests mm -hmm. and the other guests put everything to their side away from the first guest so for example if i'm a second third whatever guest i put my kaishi envelope with the extra kaishi that's prepared for cleaning the koicha bowl on my left side when i turn to take my tea i do the kancha i drink i set it down that stuff's right there next to my left knee and i pick it up wipe throw that dirty one in that extra kaishi and then pass it on and then i can fold that all up stick it in a pocket or hide it under my foot or whatever if i don't mm. have it <laughs> <at all. laughs> okay so, so we, we talked a bit about that you now have your t-ball ready wiped in front of you on the kobuksa yeah so well yeah whatever you're doing with that tissue get it out of your hand uh, so your hands are clean pick up the kobuksa again now you're going to turn it counterclockwise so that you get the front back to you then there's the next guest okay at this point we we skipped what they were supposed to be doing while the while somebody's cleaning their bowl the next guest who's going to be drinking should say osaki ni to the next guest so that's already out of the way mm -hmm. by this point that we were just talking to now so they did that I clean the bowl, I pick it up, I turn the front back to myself. At this point, I turn my knees towards the next guest and the next guest turns their knees a little bit towards me. Yeah, so we're we both facing each an, other at an angle. Sitting, facing each other at an angle. I take the bowl in my two hands and adjust, I don't know, I'm, I'm handing the bowl with that front that's facing me turning a little bit so that the front is facing that guest as much as possible. They're taking it in their hands such that they can take it and bring it in front of them with the front towards them. Hmm. And I, okay, I, so it's hand, hand to hand. And that's the only place, right? There's no other thing we pass hand to hand, is there? Than the kocha bowl, bowl at this moment. Well, there is. It's, it's, it's stuff that we don't do very much. In, in Kaiseki, uh, there's some, several of the utensils that we actually yeah, okay. pass hand-to-hand. -hand. Yeah. But not any tea utensils, I think. Mm. Okay, and then both, both people sort of turn so they face forward again? Yeah, they both face forward. They do this okurire. It's a passing on bow. So the person who drank bows at the same time as the person who's going to drink does their kancha. And then, and then that person does everything the same. Yeah. Until the last guest. And so the last guest turns from their angle, taking the bull back to straight, does the kancha, uh, turns the bull, drinks. And when they're finished drinking, they, you know, make this last sip. And there's several things kind of happening simultaneously. At the last sip, the, fir the host is going to do something we don't care mm -hmm. <laughs> um, they're gonna take the tea bowl off the kobuksa put it down in front of them still inside their mat in the in front of the hiri close the kobuksa and put it down outside their left knee to the left of their left knee between the knee line and the hiri at which point the first guest asks for the hiking of the tea bowl 
So they bow to each other, gyo bow. And then this last guest can actually clean the bowl a little better than everybody else did. So that doesn't mean necessarily, you know, go to town with a <laughs> sque squeegee and a, you know. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, it should be cleaned a little bit more carefully and maybe a little deeper uh, for the hike. And we want to be able to see more of the bowl uh, and have less tea up close to the mouth of the bowl. So the last guest will clean it a little bit better when they're done cleaning same kind of process uh, anyway pick a bowl up onto the left turn the bowl again counterclockwise because it's I'm just gonna make a gener generic statement which isn't always true but for the most part I don't know what percentage a huge percentage of the time <laughs> everything <laughs> everything my kids love it when I say everything don't say everything uh, Almost everything we turn in T is clockwise. So I'll just almost can say it, turn things clockwise. The only time we're turning it counterclockwise is after we drink the tea bowl. Yep. As we know, later along, those rules change. But tea bowl is always the same. We turn it clockwise before we drink, then drink, then turn it counterclockwise after we drink. So it's in your hand, front back towards you. Uh, are we sliding? Okay, I'm gonna put the tea bowl out, then the kabuksa goes out, and follow it all the way back up to the first guest, where you turn the tea bowl, so the front, turning it clockwise, so the front is back towards the first guest, set it down outside their mat, directly in front of them, and take the kobuksa in your left palm, reach around, turn it as you put it out so that the front is towards them and it's on their left. Mm -hmm. So like, and then like they found it originally. Back. Yeah, those, so that it's in the same r mm -hmm. spatial relationship as they saw it first. And then you go back to your seat as the last guest. And then the first guest is going to take that kobuksa back inside their mat to the right of their knee and the tea bowls should already be directly in front of them. They, you shouldn't have to move it. Osaki knee to the next guest. First look from a sole position. Pick it up. Bring it inside your inside your mat, inside the heri, where you can look at it more closely. Again, don't lift it up too high. If you want to see the bottom of it, turn it over and look at the bottom. Don't lift mm. it up over your head. <clears throat> And that goes There's for better. lots of the dogu you pick up, right? It's keep it as close to the tatami as possible. Support yourself as good as possible. So typically elbows on, on knees yeah. to get all the way yeah. down, proper support. Uh, you won't, if you drop it, it shouldn't break. Yeah, when it's only a few centimeters at most off the ground, it's a very small chance of breaking. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um and different teachers, I, I've maybe almost all the teachers I, I've seen and talked to agree that elbows on knees is a good idea. Mm. I've only met a few that hated the idea. Mm. <laughs> uh, it's the same as like leaning on your hands when you're sitting or when you're doing a bow and leaning on your hands when you bow. Um, that's their justification, right? Like you're not supposed to support yourself with your hands oh. but in this case i think you actually are trying to create a more stable uh body structure so elbows on knees is is a good way for most people to feel like they're stable cool uh looking at the bowl is that the the the, the, um, the person the last guest set it out there is no bowing right in the handing over no no and, and I mean, we only have one to my way, <laughs> and that's if you're bringing it up to the keening, then of course you bow. Yeah. Uh, but the basic guest etiquette at this point is guest is taking something back to the first guest. There's no bow. Mm -hmm. Good. First guest, Osakini. Yeah, first guest does Osakini, looks at the bowl, 
when they're finished they put it back down have one last look from when it's outside the heading and at that time of last look is a good time for the next guest to be saying osaki ni and then the way we do this part like i said the bowl was outside the heady uh, for the first and last look but when we pass it to the next guest we pass it inside the heady between guests and then the second guest is going to take it from inside the heady and put it back outside the heady in front of them mm. This is, this is definitely something that's different between different schools. And hiking uh, Kobuksa. And the hiken, essentially everything we hike in is exactly like that. Mm. So you're going to take it from inside the heri next to you, put it outside the heri in front of you, do the hiken. Sometimes this part is also fun. If you can synchronize it with the person next to you, you both do your first and last look together, mm. pass the thing on to the next person. If you're really interested in something and you need a second longer to look at it, don't worry about the synchronization. <laughs> But your... it's it's a it's a fun thing to practice. And if you're in Keiko, it should be Keiko Dogu, and you really don't need to spend a lot of time with it. I think a lot of people, <clears throat> their only tea is Keiko. And so they spend a lot of time looking at that Keiko Dogu because they think it's something special, even though it isn't. Um It's not a good practice. I think in Keiko, it's actually a good practice to try and work on this synchronizing movements and moving together with people around you without really looking at them. It's a nice practice. Mm. And then the last guest end, ends up with the uh, both utensils. Yeah. Or, yeah. So the last guest, you're going to put that bowl <clears throat> inside the line to your left, beyond your left knee and the kobuksa and goes again to the left of the bowl lower side and then maybe some kind of eye contact with the first guest and you're going to return them in a, what we call dai to the place where the host needs them so the first guest is going to start sliding out the last guest puts the tea bowl out there puts the kobukusa out next to it, then slides out, continues that until you get to a place where you're facing where the shokyaku is waiting for you already. The shokyaku yeah. should get to the place before you. Now we're sort of in a four and a half mat room. Just to have said it, that generally if you're gonna move more than half a tatami, you probably want to stand and walk. So if you're in a bigger room and you know have... Like if you think about it, you're in an eight mat room. You don't want to scoot from the other end of that room all the way up to the, <laughs> uh, where you're gonna meet, right? Then yeah, stand up so and, and, and walk. My general uh, rule that I tell people is one mat. If you're gonna be traveling more than one mat, one mat. then get up and walk. Mm. Um, and yeah, since. When the tea came out, you said the first guest slides up, so I just skipped in the four and a half mat room. But yeah, there's a um, the the difference with the walking here too. Uh, if you're gonna stand to get your tea bowl or to return a tea bowl, in this case, the tea bowl goes on your left palm. You pick up the kobuksa from the wasa edge, which is on the right, with your right hand, and then how do i hold the loose ends upwards and press your right hand up against the side of the bowl mm. to walk yeah and uh, when we get when we get to the meet, meeting point it's basically the same way as you did when you brought it for hiking right for koicha that's right you well yeah you're going to turn the bowl on your left palm clockwise to the front back towards the first guest put it down directly in their center, take the kobuksa the same way, turn it as you give it back to them with it being on the left of the bowl, their left. And still no bowing. No bow. Mm -hmm. Then you take off as the last guest, go back to your seat. The first guest generally will move those two utensils closer towards the alignment that they were given and adjust their body in that line. Again, uh, some different schools do different things here. So this is a nice place of, of contrast and comparison. 
anyway, the first guess then, so move the ball, move the kobuksa, turn slightly, then pick up the ball, turn the ball so the front's back towards, straight towards where the host is going to come get it, set it there, and the kobuksa goes next to it. In this case, it's going to be on your left or the yes, it, the the host's right because yes. it's the lower side. Yeah, so it's it's not perfectly turned from what you got it. Yeah, it, everywhere else it was keeping that yeah. kobux on the left, and and now you're putting it on the right. The host's the right. Host. Yeah. Yeah. So just in in order of time, let's quickly <coughs> do. Uh, if this was Usucha instead, uh, right? So the 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 guest would still go fetch the ball. Um, they would put it in between them and the next guest. Do a osakini. If they're not the first guest, they would put them on the right between the. Is this the different order? Hmm. No, this is good. This is good. Yeah, so, so it goes on the right, and it's like. Uh, Sure, you don't want another ball, or I will drink with you, uh, mm -hmm. type of thing. And these are also all happening on the inside of the line. And then it goes in front with a Otuma Chodai Itashimas, or a version of thank you for the tea service, or tea, or something like that to the host. Mm -hmm. then yeah. Or Shoban, or Saki, or Tamai. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I got, yeah, the, and, I got uh, the order wrong. So it's it's first to the upper guest, then osaki ni after it's it's done that it's your bowl of tea, right? Yeah, yeah. first to yeah. the guests who already drank. Yeah, so I got the first run through. I got it wrong, but it, then the drinking is pretty much uh, the same, right? It's uh, put it on your palm, uh, turn the ball same way. Uh, now kancha, turn the ball, drink here. I, I hear a lot of people confusing it with, with koicha, saying you should drink it in three sips. Uh, you should drink the tea bowl with the full content. And depending on the temperature, uh, you need to adjust <laughs> the, the, the amount of sips. Yeah. But so they still talk about like some kind of ideal world is three and a half sips. But yeah, it completely depends on how big of the bowl of tea the host made and how hot it is. Mm. Sometimes it's impossible to make make it in only three and a half. Yeah. And then uh, once you've drunk the tea, um, here it's just a light with your finger wipe the, uh, the spot where you drank. That's there. right. Yeah, your index finger and your thumb, you just kind of wipe across there where you drank from. Wipe those fingers off on some kaishi that you've got for cleaning your fingers. Yeah. And then turn them back counterclockwise again. Yes, and do the hiking immediately. That's right. Yeah, you're the only person drinking out of your bowl, so you can hike in it right away. And then return it to the uh, the host, and they'll make new bowl, and same for every guest along the line. That's right. Okay, so this became quite a long recording. So actually, we had to break it up into two recordings. So I hope the transition isn't uh, too jarring. Um. Just to recap, we've just returned the tea ball uh, and explained how to do that in both Usucha and Koicha. And that means the, the next uh, activity for the guest would probably be talking about the, the utensils. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, did we talk? <laughs> did we talk about uh, asking about tea and sweets during the Koicha? Let's assume we didn't, and I'll oh. cut it out if we did. Okay. Because, yeah, we, we obviously, if we were returning the bowl, we already got past that, but I, I can't remember if we did or not. Yeah. So, so for Koicha, I think we can assume we did, and then for Usucha, uh, now would be the time, right? Yeah, it's the host is maybe taking the bowl back, washing it uh, for the next person or, or whatever. Um, it's, all, it's nice to ask about what you were drinking, comment on any of the sweets. And then uh, uh, maybe talk about the tea bowls too. That is uh, for both coach and usage, right? Yeah, that's right. It's just kind of nice to, for this, talk about them kind of after the fact so that it's not 
uh, kind of spoiling the surprise beforehand. And that's true of uh, many of the utensils. You kind of ask about them as they're used so that you don't uh, kind of ask questions out of out of the blue. Mm. Yeah, so what would be the typical thing to ask? You know, what what are the things that we're taught to ask? About the bowls or about the tea? Yeah, so let, let's do, um, assume that we're doing usage suggest for a little bit because then you would still like, what tea was it? Where did it come from type of thing? Uh, maybe comments on the suite, ask if they have names, any of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of them, and, especially if you're, in Japan, they might come from a special, you know, temple or place that's associated with the season. Um, and just the same, if you're making them yourself, uh, the guests might want to ask, you know, what uh, is this sweet, you know, something special about this time of year? Or it really is interesting when you're making tea out of Japan that, you know, you still mm -hmm. want to kind of include these seasonal things if you're making your own sweets. So it's nice if you're the guest to ask about it. Yeah, I don't know how this would work in other settings, but for me, it is often like, I would expect the guest to say something about the sweet and maybe like ask if I made them myself or, right? but but not to commit a uh, question and then leave the whole stuff to fill in the blanks that they actually can fill in and depending as a, as a guest you can often easily see if it's something unfamiliar or if it's something that you you purchased or you have a substitute right so the mm -hmm. uh, make it a natural conversation yeah yeah the other day we had a student that brought some sweets that i was sure were store-bought they looked really professional but she had made them herself so it was <laughs> fun to find out and ask about yeah and then over to the table, right? We've talked I, I about sweets. Yeah, these things, asking questions uh, about the utensils really comes down to the to the guest, the main guest, or or even uh, the other guests if they want to ask something specific too. But like you were saying, you don't want to put the host on the spot, so you don't necessarily want to ask too specific of a question, kind of leave mm. the questions more open-ended so that the host can fill in the blanks uh, yep. but yeah if it's something that you find really interesting you might not be able to help yourself <laughs> you want to <laughs> ask more questions but often i find like what a lovely table i really like the texture that is my question or invitation to right. please tell me the rest you might know about it mm -hmm. and then that might be yeah it's something I, I got as a gift or i picked it up from here and then you know that they have no idea other than that. Or at that, <laughs> at that point, they will come with the, like the story. It's like, yeah, this is meaningful. It's from this and this potter, um, and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try to word your phrases so that they're not necessarily questions, but leading the host into being able to give information that if they have it. But yeah, if they seem like they know what the piece is, then I, I think it's okay to get a little bit more detail than you're questioning. Yeah. If okay. they look like they know. Okay. And and what other utensils would we typically ask about between the table and asking for hiking? Typically, huh? Well, probably <laughs> typically it's really only maybe the mizusashi. Uh, if you're using a tana, you could do the tana. Um, just because the things you're going to ask for hiking of, you don't want to ask about in advance again. No, you want to see them first, right? Yeah, yeah. Wait, let them wait their time, proper time. <laughs> um, so, Misu Sashi, um, good, Tana. Um, yeah, people sometimes will do the futoki, you know. It's okay mm. to ask for hiking of it too. It's small enough that people can ask. I mean, people can ask for mizusashi hiking too, but. Uh, that happened it. to me on the Christmas Chakai in Midorikai. Mm. And I so, so, so sama wanted to see that. The mizusashi. And in the in the kitchen, there was like a big bit of a fuss because usually in the sink, you bring out just the body, not the lid. Mm -hmm. But the mizusashi we were using, it was quite obvious that the lid was the main attraction. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could have just, just brought the lid. 
<laughs> yeah, the whole thing it got brought out on a. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he used a white towel, mm-hmm. and it was carried and placed on a white towel. I think so. Yeah, yeah that's a pretty standard way to do the Misusashi hiking. Mm. Okay, but then then the the uh, first guest will ask for hiking, uh, depending on if it's Kocha or Usucha, but basically it's the tea container. And he yeah. purchased it. Do you want to be more specific? Sorry, I'm interrupting you, but no, no, go If you want to be more specific with the guest role, then they needed to ask for the finish. Yes, of course. Mm-hmm. For instance, they would ask, "Toso um, um, right? kudasai." Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they, even in Koicha, there'll be a bow when the host says that they're going to finish. So uh, just one more little step there. Good. And then they ask for hiking. That's right. Uh, it's the same time for both Koicha and Ustcha when the, well, almost always when the Mizusashi gets closed. There's a few yeah. funny little exceptions, but. Yeah. No rules without exceptions. In yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but then basically it's the Natsume Shashaku for Ustcha and it's Chaire Shashaku and Shifku for Koicha. Yes. It's a general rule, and then there, as we said, always some uh, variations. That's right. Yeah, and mostly the variations are all going to come from the actual utensils that are being used. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the host does their thing, and uh, I was always taught that when the Kensui leaves the room, so that the host sort of leaves the room for the first time after the Tema, that yeah. was the right time to go get the utensils. Yeah, for this new Montemai, that's the timing. Uh, Kensu is going out, and then the Shokyaku can go up and, and retrieve the Haiken Dogu. And then they get placed on the right side? Uh-huh, yeah. I'll just, I don't know. If it's uh, Hiroma and, and Yojohan differences, uh, Koma differences, Essentially, if you're going to go more than one mat in distance, you get up and walk the dogu mm-hmm. back to the, your seat. And if it's less than one mat, slide up and get it and bring it back by mm-hmm. sliding. Um, uh, I don't know. Ula says I'm I'm teaching too much on this podcast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is the teaching of the the, of the, the guests. So it's, it's a good time to teach too much. <laughs> Uh, I would say, remember to move the dogu and then yourself. So bring the things to your knees and you slide back and bring them to your knees and slide back and bring them to the heady and slide back and then bring them inside the heady to your right, tea container closest to you, the other things farther away to your right. Yeah, and then shifku. Yeah. And then uh, one detail. Uh, like the knot of the shifuku is always towards the uh, the chai, chai. Right? That's yeah. right. Which means, depending on where and when you're doing this, you might have to flip it over. Uh huh. And it's a standard putting it onto your left palm, holding it from the side at three o'clock, and flipping it over with your right hand, and then setting it down with your right hand. Yeah, from the bottom. Yep. Yep. Good, and then you sit around waiting while the, the host <laughs> finish up, right? It's, uh, That's right. So yeah, and that goes... basically is just going to mean whenever, whatever they do, by the time they go and close the door, then you can start the hiking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's a little bit of a osakini uh, for the lower guests. So excuse me for, for barging ahead of you. <laughs> That's right, and then just one by one you take the... First utensil closest to you, put it out in front outside the heady. Uh, do this first look, pick it up, keeping it close to the ground, have a nice look. Uh, if it's an atsume or a chaire, don't pick it up with the lid on. Hold it first with your left hand, remove the lid with your right, look at the lid. You can use two hands, set the lid down to the right of the tea container, then pick up the tea container, look at it the lid back on, take your last look, pass it to this, your... This, oh, this first and last look, I, I find it's the, the new new guests often get wrong in a way. Mm. And it's the, 
it, they want to go to the touching immediately. <laughs> let me see it. Let me see it. Yeah. Um, so that, that is a, a pause, right? Uh, hands touching the ground, looking at the thing from the top. Remember, this might be a world famous piece, or that's at least the attitude we're, we're having towards it. Right? Mm -hmm. It might be your one and only time to look at this thing. Uh, so take your time looking at it. Yeah, and there's been many occasions where I'll look at it like this overall view without touching and then not touch it to look at it more closely. You know, if I feel like maybe it's getting touched too much <laughs> mm. or maybe it doesn't need to be touched yet again, just look with your eyes and then pass it on. Um, especially, you know, it's good in practice to practice picking things up and looking at them closely. Um, and then you learn how to not spill the tea out of it, for example. Yeah. Um, because but, it's it's not good in a in a real tea gathering uh, to be spilling tea out of the tea container, or to mess up the mountain inside the natsume. Yeah. So that is what I find the most people do when they handle the um, the natsume is that they get to some stages. It's like, oh, I know what I'm doing, and then you get an abrupt movement. Mm -hmm. moving the, the nuts, man. The abrupt movements are bad uh, all the time, but especially for the <laughs> nuts, man. You, you basically level the mountain to a field for the next person, so they don't get to see uh, the handiwork of the host. That's right. Which if is... you're lucky, you level it to a field. If you're unlucky, you create a mushroom cloud. <laughs> <laughs> and then it, it's moved with right hand to the inside of the the heady uh, and next toward the next guest, right? That's right. We take it from inside the heady, from Kamiza, put it outside the heady in front of us, and then inside the heady to the next person. Mm. And then rinse and repeat for the other utensils you've been given. That's right. To look at. Yeah, and then by the time it gets to the last guest, again they're going to put things in a standard room to their left keeping the tea container closest to them and yeah. then everything else farther away. And especially for the, the, the last item, it feels a bit odd to put it there. And you have it in front of you. Next thing you're about to do is, is uh, move back for a meeting with the first guest to, to hand them back. But still, you put that last item all the way to the left, which is a bit awkward with your mm -hmm. right hand. And then you take the rightmost item, which is the tea container, put in front of you, then line them up in front of you before you move uh, for the meeting. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, the only exception to that would be is if you are in a bigger room where you're walking. And in Koicha, for example, you wouldn't necessarily have to put that shifuku all the way down at the end. You could just keep it in your hand, flipped, and then put the chashaku and take the chaide and stand up. Mm. That's one shortcut, but pretty much always safe to put everything to your side first, make sure the shokyaku is ready to go and meet you, and then take everything back to the first guest. And when you carry it, um, if you're standing and carrying it, you carry it the same way the host would. Yeah, it's the same way the host is going to take it out of the room. Yep, which means it's different hands for the tea container if it's usucha and koicha. Yeah, usucha or koicha or koicha from a natsume, those things all, mm. um, especially koicha from a natsume and usucha are easy to get confused, but mm. it's opposite hands, yeah. Mm. So that means normal, let's say the normal koicha, Right, it's it's shifuku on the palm of the left hand, shashaku on top, and chaire in the right hand. That's great. But for usucha, it would be natsume on a flat left hand, and shashaku in the right hand. Correct. Okay, back then both the, the first guest and the last guest uh, somehow get close to the tamaisa and uh, does an exchange of these utensils. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd point out in this part, um, when you're sitting up to do this dei movement where you're taking things back to the host, um, try to keep
keep your feet not pointed at the other guests. So the, sh the first guest can have their feet pointing back at their seat. The last guest can have their feet pointing back at their seat or even farther towards the door of the room. Uh, and that just keeps it a little bit more civil for everybody else. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then um, if you walked, you would have to put stuff down in front of you. If you scooted, it's already down in front of you, right? Yeah, so you just one way or another, those things will be lined up in front of you. And then starting with the tea container, you'll turn the front to the first guest, put it at their right knee and then the tea scoop and shifuku if that's koicha. Mm. And I don't know, the shifuku, the knot is to the right, and so you don't need to flip it. You just put your thumb on the bottom and kind of swing it around so that it's mm. still pointing at the chaide. And then the, oh, go ahead. No, no, for the shasuku, right, I like the walking up of the fingers. So you pick it mm. up. And, and here, whenever I, I tell someone, pick it up at the end, they pick it up at like the last millimeter and they can barely hold it. <laughs> but it's, it, it's take it toward the end. Mm -hmm. Then left hand in front, same direction. So your uh, palm is pointing toward you. And then the last move, you turn your hand around um, to grab it. Mm -hmm. And then you rewind your hand and then the shashaku is turned and you can place it down. But I like that walking up the, the shashaku, so often I see it done with like, you pick it up middle, then take it on the fushi and the last grip is gonna be above the fushi, yeah. which is not so nice. Yeah, try not to go past the fushi or if there's no fushi or fushi is in a weird place, try not to go past like half point, halfway yeah. up. Um, yeah, I agree with this. Each hand goes up higher and higher on the chashaku. Try to, as you do that, though, keep the end of the chashaku down lower than your hands. The tip, right? The tip, yeah. Um, All so these things you... are much easier to show than describe in words, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so then you put them down in front of the first guest, then what? Yeah, then the last guest goes back to their seat. So there First, is no exchanging bow here. There's not a bow here. This is just mm -hmm. taking things back to their mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. And this first guest should then take those utensils slightly turning towards where they're going to return them. Um, I like this concept. At this point, other schools, the first guest will actually do another hike in at this point. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to make sure everything's okay after it got passed down through all the guests, or maybe also their last chance to see things as the most <laughs> important guest. Um, and so thinking about that, like checking their utensils, making sure they're all correct, we just kind of move them one last time right to where you need them before you turn them to give them back. And you can kind of think about it as, a th as like a last check. But you're not actually fully hiking them again. Yeah, there'd be no rule against it, but that's not part of our school's teaching. Standard. Yeah. No. And then for me, I like the, the rule to remember which things go on which side when I'm, because when you turn it, it's a little bit confusing of what's the correct order. Mm -hmm. So I like that the front of the lineup of utensils, when you have them in front of you, will always spell in, in, in Romanji 10, shashaku and tea container. So that is the front position. <laughs> what? Tell me this again. And if you write one zero, but you do it with a shashaku as a one, the tea container as a zero, then you're watching it from the front. This for me helps me when I'm handing and turning utensils around for someone else. I see. Is, is if it still spells 10, I've got them the wrong the wrong way. If they spell zero one, now I'm okay. Because mm, it's going to be 10 for them. Yes. I see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, it's whatever way you need to remind <laughs> yourself. So it's a nice yeah. way that you've created. You want the chashaku on your left and the round tea container on your right. So yes. that those two things say 10. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's nice. I guess then, uh, yeah, my way is just because I, I guess I'm good with left and right. So for me, it's easy to think I want the T container on my right and I want it on the host right, which is opposite side. Mm, yep. But yeah, there's a lot of people who aren't into left and right so much. So uh, yeah, they need something like a 10. Yep. I'm not saying you're not good at left and right. I think you're good at left and right. <laughs> Yeah, there's some of these rules that just stick with you. Yeah. There is no good reason why this particular rule stuck. And it, it, I had like certain of the things that Hamana Sensei always would say. And I can hear his voice in my head. And I get to a point in it. Right? Like I can hear Hamana Sensei <laughs> saying those words mm -hmm. to remind me of what was the order of this again. All right. Yeah. Anyway. The first guest also go back to their seat after having uh, placed the utensils for the host. Mm -hmm. And just waiting for the host to come back. Yeah. So the host come in, sit down. There's a bow, right? Thank you yeah. for letting us view your wonderful things. Yeah. And this bow should just be between the host and the first guest. Mm. And then, yeah saying thank you and asking about those different utensils, starting with the tea container, working your way down. Is it, so let's, let's just go through the standard points you would ask, and then we can talk about what we actually ask afterwards. <laughs> okay. So if it's a Natsume, for example, we usually just say, ask about the katachi, ask what the shape is, mm -hmm. and then ask about the nuri or who it's not about the lacquer so much as who did the lacquer. Mm. Sometimes you might not know, or you might know, you know, Wajima Nori, like you, you, the place that mm. it's from. Uh, so that's, again, the kind of, it's a kind of an open-ended question. If I ask what the shape is, the host can answer with the shape and anything else they want. If I ask about the lacquer, they can ask, I mean, they can answer, where it was lacquered or who lacquered it or what kind of lacquer, uh, you know, the mm. design that's on the lacquer. Mm. So that in itself is kind of an open-ended question that's not too pushy. Mm. Uh, and then that leads into what else you were saying, um, what other kinds of things you would ask. Like if you had never heard of the shape that they said it was, or... <laughs> um, yeah, so follow-up questions, basically. Yeah. Yeah, all those kind of things, like what... What's the style of the makie? Uh, yeah, what's it represent? Things like that. Whose signature is that on inside the lid? Um, yeah, and if it's a if it's a chaire, then it's the same. It's the shape first, and then okamamoto. So it's the kiln. What kiln is it from? Mm -hmm. And again, that's going to lead the host into being able to say what kind of ceramic tradition it's from, and or who did it personally, and anything else that they feel like. Mm -hmm. You have to remember, most of the time, people don't have a huge selection of things to choose from. But if they have any choice at all, then they obviously chose what they have for you for a reason. So it's nice to talk about, you know, um, I see you're using this one today. Mm. Uh, I'm 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 happy to see it again, or you know whatever like that. <laughs> and you know that's already going to let the host. That's enough to let the host kind of give any reasoning they want if they feel like sharing them. Mm. Okay. Uh, standard question for Shashaku mm -hmm. is who carved it and if it has a name. Mm. And uh, for Shif, we are on. Shifuku, we generally ask what the pattern of the fabric is. Um, you can ask okireji wa, which is what's the, you know, kireji basically means it's a, a known pattern. So mm. if you can tell it's not a known pattern, then you ha maybe ha need to ask something else, or they'll just answer, oh, it's not a kireji. That's just this fabric that I got from this place and this time and had it made into shifuku for this. Mm. Uh, so it's still probably okay question to ask even if you can tell it's not a, a traditional famous you know known japanese or chinese fabric style 
And we used to always also ask who made it, who sewed it, essentially. Mm. Um, and you can do that or not. Of, often, I mean, like when you're at various cake bar, they will often give the famous uh, maker's name. I think that it's a nice thing to, as an exercise to learn who the, the famous makers are. Yeah, if you're if you're doing this for Keiko, uh, it's definitely good to ask, you know, what's the shape of this? What kind of lacquer? What's the shape of this? What's the kiln? Who carved this tea scoop? What's its name? Uh, what's the pattern of this shifuku? Who made it? Because all of those can be used as teaching and memory devices for, you know, different generations of tea masters, different famous makers of all those different kinds of utensils. Yep. Yeah, so it, and each student should take it upon themselves to try to know those answers before the questions are asked. Um, that's part of the practice. I agree. And in a, like for my part, because so much of the utensils that uh, people in Norway are likely to, to be using, you don't have any good answers for most of these questions. Right. I would actually prefer, would you please tell me about them? Mm -hmm. And then that allows the host to, to zoom in on the things that are, there's a reason they chose it mm -hmm. beside, it's the only chida I have. So yes, it's a $5 chida from a flea market. It's my only one, right? That's maybe not what they want to talk about. They might want to <laughs> talk about that. The shasha that actually someone they know made for them and it has a name and right. all that stuff. So I think that's a, uh, asking those open, very round questions. Um, but as you also said, um, as a host, you should know the answers mm -hmm. or at least have thought about what you want to say if you don't know the answer. Yeah, it's very different. All of this is very dependent on the actual tea gathering. Because we can talk about Keiko situation and what a guest needs to do to be able to learn all the guest parts properly. Mm -hmm. And then kind of the typical out of Japan tea gathering where you may or may not have anything, like you said, that you can, you can answer those questions to. Or the ones that are the famous tea gatherings, the, used the famous utensils. Uh, that those kind of tea gatherings still happen all the time in Japan. And so in those cases, uh, you know, they're going to have the right answers for those questions and you need to know what they're talking about. So that's, an, again, a good reason to study all those other makers and things like that. You, you're never going to learn them all, of course. There's, there's more famous makers than anybody could know all of. But... Uh, we have to remember that the tea that we're learning out of Japan started in Japan with famous utensils. So everything we're doing is kind of a, is, it's a, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to use wabi. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a changed form. Mm. Yeah, and adaptation maybe. Yeah, everything we do is an adaptation. Uh, something that's a little different from from the real thing. And it's not that it's not real. It's just not the original. Mm. Um, and in Japan, it's okay because they even have a system of doing that, right, that we all know uh, about utsushi, uh, 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 copies of things. It's, it's like it, but it's not the real thing. Mm. And that's why in our school, at least, and maybe many that practice tea outside of Japan or in in tea schools where it's normal people practicing in Japan even. Everything has to be changed. And because of that, the utensils are changed. We are into this spirit of tea realm, right? That is what we're trying to not change. Mm. And like you said, somebody has one chai date that they got in a flea market, it doesn't matter because they're using the best thing they have and we respect that and are thankful for it. 
But one one thing I think that you should not belittle whatever you have. I right. see that, like, like um, this might the, the oh, it's just some junk I got at the flea market. Uh, that is maybe yeah, it's true that you got it in a flea market, but that could also be phrased as this is something I brought home from Japan when I was there my first and only time. Yeah, I found this no. and fell in love with it in Japan and brought it back. And, you know, yeah, you can't, if you talk your things down, like you said, then how are the guests supposed to feel special? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the hiking <laughs> part. It's not really about guest etiquette. But... No, 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 no. But the, you know, we love tangents on this. <laughs> Uh, tr trying to get back, right? So, yeah. like, like all good things, it comes to an end. And then, uh, thank you for letting us see all these wonderful things. And the host take them out, right? That's right. Say thank you, Shin Bao. Host mm -hmm. picks it all up, goes to the door, puts them down in front of them, and then there's going to be this final bow between the host and all the guests. Yeah, a little bit depending on on where we are and how we are. Now there might be charcoal and more tea, but if this is Usucha, right? It's the uh, wrapping up uh, time. Maybe we yeah, even to... even after Usucha, every now and then there's there's some more charcoal or something. It really depends on the gathering and the time of the day and all this kind of thing. But essentially, it's a wrapping up, like you mm -hmm. said, and the host is going to come back, and everybody's going to want to say thank you. So, so that goes much the same way as the beginning, right? That one person scoots forward, uh, says their piece to the host, and then the, the next one does the same thing. That's right. And again, as a guest, you want to be concise, but um, yeah, I don't know, respectful and try to, you know, maybe it's better to not say anything except thank you. It really just depends on you and if you, you know, you've got something that really <clears throat> stuck with you that you want to say. It, it's it's a good time to do it. You can also do it in a thank you letter or something. Mm. Uh, it just depends on on the occasion. So again, everybody did that, and yeah, the host is going to go back to sitting outside the door. The first guest is going to say thank you one more time and don't bother seeing us off and everybody bows yep. the door closes and at this point i actually like if all the guests say thanks to the shokyaku but all the guests just saying thanks to each other is also okay mm. um because as you realized even by this talk this shokyaku has a lot of extra work taking care of everybody um <laughs> trying to trying to keep some some flow and some conversation and some information getting to everybody. Uh, so I, it, I do think it's nice to separately thank the Shokyaku. And then everybody can say thanks to each other. And then just like in the beginning, Shokyaku is going to say Osaki ni and go and view the Haiken. I mean, Haiken, the, the Toko and the Tamaiza before going out. And these are basically identical. Uh, to the beginning, right? Yeah. Yeah, the only thing I would say is different, it's just kind of a fun thing here, uh, is, you know, we go up to the Tokonoma with our right foot, down and around, and then from the Tamaiza, we go out all the lines with the left, even if it's mm. kind of going up in the room. So it's kind of a fun mm. thing to do if you're into knowing which foot you go over the lines with. Mm. And then, if this is the is a chachi, they would the the host would actually come running to the niji uh, and there would be a final bow outside, right? Yeah. So the timing is fun. The last guest has to return anything to the door that's still left in the room. So there might be sweets tray, there might be zabuton, uh, there might be tobacco bone, whatever's left. In the room, the last guest takes to the door on their way out. And then once they're out and close the door, all the guests wait outside because even though they said don't see us off, they know the host is going to come see them off. 
So meanwhile, the host is removing all that things that are blocking the door and running to the <laughs> where the guests just went out. And the guests have lined themselves up and the lining goes, the first guest is closest to the door, then the last guest, then the second, third, fourth, etc. Mm. They all wait there with their hand fans in their hands and then the host will open the door. Everybody bows silently and then they turn and, and walk away. Yeah, here I think there's two things that I don't know if it's strictly taught, but that I would like to see happen. So one, at this point, don't bother the host anymore. <laughs> now, now it's time for the host to maybe have 10, 15 minutes of quiet meditation in the tea room, contemplating uh, the time you all spent together. So that's one of them. And the other one is that this is also a good time to leave uh, a small uh, gift of appreciation for the host in the in the match as you you depart. Yeah, if you didn't leave any kind of of gift or ore or misio mimai at the beginning, uh, when you left the machiai, you could certainly leave it now. Mm. Yeah, if I would, in my way of looking at it, you should give, if there's, if you know there's misia people in addition to the host, definitely bring something they can eat. Yeah. Uh, like, like sweet, some nice treat that is easy to eat as they're super busy in the kitchen. And I would, they should get that in advance because that's going to keep them fed during the event. And then I would think that you could leave a small thing of appreciation in, in the tea room or the matcha as you leave. And yeah. this, of course, depends on the setup, right? If there's a agreed upon or a might change. I'm assuming here you got invited to someone's thing in the West since you're listening to this in English. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Then it would still be nice to like leave a small thing of appreciation in the match. Yeah. That's right. And then go go home and write a thank you letter. Yeah, if you didn't write it in advance. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that as I as a promote. I don't either, but it's so weird because I've actually gone to like check my mail after the guests have left from a tea gathering and found already a thank you letter in the mailbox. It's like what? How did this get here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, my, I agree. My sensibilities, it would be go home and do what the host did. Contemplate the event you just attended and then write a, a nice thank you letter. Yeah, the standard thing we like to tell people is don't talk too much as you're leaving the tea gathering. Let it sink in. Uh, keep that calm harmonious feeling with you as long as you can and yeah contemplate the gathering so or or even think consciously about anything you would like to say in a thank you letter and then yeah get it written while it's all still fresh in your mind yeah this has been a very long episode so a real big thank you if you managed to stick with us yeah thank you and sorry <laughs> A uh, huge thank you to you, uh, Aaron. I learned a lot uh, during the episode. There's many of these details that you practice way too seldom to keep them all correct. Yeah, it's fun to think think it all through in your head. And then if you're now from a different school in Udasinke and would like to join me for a discussion about your school's guest etiquette in comparison to, to Udasinke, I would love to make that episode so that we can all learn from each other we want to like, hear it <laughs> yeah like aaron man mentioned during the the day i of the dogu that other schools they hike it and for me it, it's nice to see how other schools are interpreting things or doing things different um, so i think that's a good opportunity so let me know if you're interested and thank you for listening thank you very much this has been a production of tea life audio producing an episode requires a bit of time and money. We do the work for free and hope you will help us cover the cost. Go to tlife.audio slash support to help us bring another episode to your tea world. The taste of matcha when there is no one to talk tea. Tea Life Audio. <laughs>